Welcome to Mindful Moments, where we explore practical ways to bring mindfulness and meditation into our everyday lives. I'm your host, Emily, and today we have a very special episode planned for you. We'll be talking about how to practice mindfulness and meditation, not just as a concept, but in real, practical scenarios that you can relate to. Joining me today is David, a mindfulness coach with years of experience. Welcome, David. Thanks for having me, Emily. I'm excited to dive into this topic and share some practical tips with our listeners. Let's start with a simple definition, David. How would you define mindfulness and meditation? Great question. Mindfulness is the practice of being fully present in the moment, aware of where we are and what we're doing, without being overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's happening around us. Meditation, on the other hand, is a more structured practice that often involves sitting quietly, focusing the mind, and observing thoughts and sensations without judgment. That's a wonderful explanation. So, let's get into some real-life scenarios. Imagine you're someone with a busy job, and you don't have a lot of time to sit quietly and meditate. How can you incorporate mindfulness into your daily routine? This is a common concern. One way to integrate mindfulness into a busy schedule is through what I call micro-mindfulness practices. These are small, intentional pauses throughout your day. For example, let's say you're at work and feeling overwhelmed by your to-do list. Take a minute to just sit, close your eyes, and focus on your breath. Even just a minute of deep breathing can help center you. I love that idea. Can you give us an example of how someone might use micro-mindfulness in a specific situation, like during a stressful meeting? Absolutely. Let's say you're in a meeting that's starting to get heated. You notice your heart rate increasing and your mind racing. Instead of getting caught up in the stress, try this. Discreetly place your feet flat on the floor and take a deep breath. Feel the ground beneath you and bring your attention to your breath. This can help ground you and give you a moment to respond more calmly and thoughtfully. That's really practical. It sounds like mindfulness is about creating these small moments of awareness throughout the day. Exactly. Another scenario could be during your commute. Instead of getting lost in thoughts about the day ahead or behind, try to pay attention to the present moment. Notice the sensation of your hands on the steering wheel the sounds around you, the feeling of your breath. This can transform an ordinary commute into a mindful practice. That's a fantastic tip. Now, let's talk about meditation. For those who are new to it, the idea of sitting still and quieting the mind can be intimidating. How do you suggest beginners get started? It's true that starting a meditation practice can feel daunting. The key is to start small and be kind to yourself. You don't need to meditate for an hour. Start with just five minutes a day. Find a quiet spot, sit comfortably, and focus on your breath. When your mind wanders, and it will, gently bring your focus back to your breath. It's not about stopping thoughts, but about noticing them and returning to your point of focus. That's very encouraging. What about incorporating meditation into a busy lifestyle? Any tips for making it a regular practice? Consistency is important, but it doesn't have to be rigid. Try to attach meditation to an existing habit. For example, meditate right after you brush your teeth in the morning. This way, it becomes a natural part of your routine. Also, be flexible with the timing. If you miss your morning session, find a few minutes during lunch or before bed. Those are great suggestions. Let's move on to a more specific example. Say you have a parent who's juggling work and kids and feels like there's no time for themselves. How can they practice mindfulness? Parenting can be incredibly demanding, but mindfulness can be woven into daily interactions with your children. For instance, during playtime, try to be fully present. Notice your child's expressions, listen to their laughter, and engage with them without distractions. This not only helps you practice mindfulness, but also strengthens your bond with your child. 
That's beautiful. So mindfulness can actually enhance relationships? Absolutely. Being fully present with another person, whether it's a child, partner, or friend, shows that you value and respect them. It fosters deeper connections and understanding. Even during challenging moments, like a child's tantrum, mindfulness can help you stay calm and respond with patience. It's amazing how these practices can fit into various aspects of our lives. What about someone dealing with anxiety or stress? How can mindfulness and meditation help them? Mindfulness and meditation are powerful tools for managing anxiety and stress. For someone dealing with anxiety, mindfulness helps by bringing attention back to the present moment, reducing the tendency to worrying about the future. Meditation can help calm the mind and body, creating a sense of peace. Practices like body skin meditation, where you focus on different parts of your body and relax them, can be particularly helpful. That's very insightful. To wrap up, could you share a simple guided mindfulness exercise that our listeners can try right now? I'd be happy to. Let's do a quick three-minute mindfulness exercise. If you're listening, find a comfortable seat. Close your eyes if you can and take a deep breath in and then exhale slowly. Now bring your attention to your breath. Notice the sensation of the air entering and leaving your body. If your mind wanders, gently bring it back to your breath. Continue this for a few moments. Now expand your awareness to include your body. Notice any areas of tension and try to relax them. Feel the support of the chair beneath you. Take one more deep breath in and exhale slowly. When you're ready, gently open your eyes. That was wonderful, David. Thank you so much for guiding us through that exercise and for sharing your insights today. I'm sure our listeners will find these tips incredibly helpful. It was my pleasure, Emily. Remember, mindfulness and meditation are practices, and it's okay to start small. The most important thing is to be consistent and kind to yourself. Wise words to end on. Thank you again, David. And thank you to all our listeners for tuning in to Mindful Moments. Until next time, stay present and take care. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a review. We'd love to hear how you practice mindfulness in your daily life. You can reach us on social media or through our website. Stay mindful, everyone.